Hello matey boys, welcome to the Battle Lounge. I just wanted to make this quick video to show you how I do foil texturing on foam. So I did it like everybody else does it for quite a long time, just getting some foil, screwing it up and then rolling it over the foam to get that beautiful natural organic texture. But the problem with this is that after a little while, a very short while in fact, the foil becomes very smooth and worn down and compacted and it loses all that detail and then it doesn't transfer to the foam very well. Especially on the foam that I use which is, it's quite a stiff foam, uh, it's under floor heating and I found that I was just getting through tons and tons of foil. So I came up with this idea to preserve that detail in the foil by just flooding something into that foil into those creases and this is this is basically how I did it so you just lay your foil out get it all ready before you start and then I'm a dental technician so I'm using acrylic resin it's a rapid repair um, acrylic resin that we use in the dental industry but you don't have to use this obviously you can use any sort of resin uh, epoxy resin two-part mixtures or whatever the, I've got a, a stack load of this <laughs> this is why I use this and it's very quick as well you know it sets in about three minutes so um, this is what I use and obviously I'm used to using it as well so it's quite easy for me I just mix it up in a pot here pour it all in and then I roll the foil up now you probably saw that I was just pinching that foil a little bit and that was just to get little ridges and dents and things in it trying to get that sort of uneven texture to it so then as I roll it up and then when the acrylic sets in all those little creases and crevices it will preserve it forever and and it, it works it works really well and I've done this a few times now and obviously this is this is quite a medium sized one you could get a great big long bit of foil and pull yourself out a nice big long one depending on the size of the walls and things like that that you're doing um, or indeed you can do little tiny ones now this other one that I'm doing um, I've not tried this before but I figured the resin ones work really well so why not try a plaster one this is again this is a dental plaster it's a fantastic plaster it's it is resin reinforced so it's a bit stiffer than your your average sort of plaster of parises and your and your and your basic gypsums that you can get um, but even so it's you know what what you need to do if you've got a plaster and it's and it's quite a soft plaster then just mix it really thick the thicker you mix it the stronger the harder it's going to set don't overdo it obviously if it's the dry mixture it's not going to it's it's not going to um, cure properly and will be very brittle so you, you need that moisture in there but if you mix it thick you'll get a very heavy dense plaster and it will be stronger and you just pour it into the model with this round one I just folded it over as you can see turn it upside down and then just teased out some of the areas in it it's a little bit different than doing it with the resin because obviously the plaster is a lot softer and more flowable a little bit more difficult to use but just teased out those little areas in the in the foil to give it that same texture and that is it left them to to dry so I'm back at home now I thought I'd try them out on a bit of the uh, XPS that I use I use this quite a lot because it's um, it's very cheap you just buy it in packets at B&Q so what I'm gonna do is get a couple of these little test pieces cut up try something a bit bigger for that one Okay, so the 
long rolling pin, after you've done it you might find that there's a few bits like up here look, which will squish and become a little bit flatter but the majority of it will just stay solid and because it's got the resin in there you can push quite hard to get that texture and it will be just as good when you get to the opposite side detail wise as it was at the start um, now I've got a little bit of a hole there sometimes what happens you might have a little bit that's sticking out that's snagging and it will it will tear your foam um, what I found with that is just clip it off or file it off or something if you do get any of those little areas but otherwise you know it it works quite well and you can use this in lots of ways you can use the edge rather than just keep going in one long roll you can just go in at different angles depending on what you want to achieve with your finished product like that and um, what I'll do in a minute I'll give these a paint up so you can see because I don't know how well you can see that on the camera at the moment and then this is the plaster one as I say this has got a lot more weight to it obviously with being plaster well I don't know what this is going to be like but I'm just thinking something like oh you can hear that crunching but that gives a quite interesting Sort of texture might work quite well for ground texture. And obviously, you can tailor these to however you want. I've done these with quite big ridges and dents in there. Uh, but the detail on these is quite small. Some of them, the foil wasn't quenched up, it was quite smooth foil. And I left the ridges quite, um, quite big and quite chunky on some. But you could really screw it up nice and tight and get a lot more smaller detail and with plaster you know making something like that is cheap as chips so we can use the edge and sometimes as well when you're using it you find a little bit on your on your thing that you you like the shape of it. it it produces a nice kind of dent or or mark that's interesting and you can keep using that over and over and doesn't matter how many times you use it it doesn't get smooth so let's just whack some of this on there i'm just lashing it on okay so that's just about dry a little bit wet still Okay, so there we go. That one has got lovely texture on it. Well, I'm really pleased with that. Let me fuss in focus. There we go. And this one done by the roller, a little bit more subtle than the other one. Um, I think I put more detail in that back side than I did that side, but. Even so, you can see how quick and easy it is with a roller as well. Obviously, if you've just got a piece of foil and you're going over it, there's only so much pressure you can put on it before it starts denting, denting the foil and making it all smooth. Whereas this, you can just put a lot of pressure on it and you can really stab it and bash it around. And to some extent, you can control that, the type of texture and the amount of texture that you put in the foil roller when you make it. So there it is, I hope you enjoyed this video guys, if you did give us a like and subscribe and all that malarkey and uh, yeah we'll see you in the next one.